Ahmed. Umar Ahmed, IFL TV, MTK Global. It's fight day in New York City. Fight Crawford day. Khan. How are you feeling, Dan? I'm excited for the fight. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I'm always excited for the fights. Mm. I think when this was first made, uh, the general consensus was what is Amir doing? He's going to get banged out by Crawford. But as we get closer and closer, people are giving Amir a serious chance in this now. I mean, I'm more excited for the fight as it's grown closer than maybe I was when it was first made. And even though I've covered lots of Khan fights and have a lot of respect for Khan, for his desire to fight the best guys, and you know, if he loses, doesn't make a lot of excuses and all that. Uh, but it's still, you know, all due respect to Amir, it's hard to pick him to win the fight. Okay, okay. How likely is it you think we'll get Crawford Spence next after this? After next, zero okay. <laughs> percent. I mean, it's just not. I mean. You'd like to think it would happen. I sure hope I would be wrong when I say that zero percent. But in terms of next, it's going to take longer than that. Even if it ever does happen, it's taking longer than the next rotation mm. for sure. So that fight to be made, what do you think needs to happen in your opinion? Listen, it's not it's not a it's not a complicated fight to make if both sides have the political will to do it. But I don't think that they necessarily do. You know, top rank claims that wants to make the fight. Okay, take them at their word but you've never heard anybody on the other side of that street say they want to make the fight except for the athlete. Errol Spence wants to fight, I know that. Pretty sure Crawford wants to fight. The two athletes want to do the fight, but you know, in this in this sport, there's much more to it than just you know two guys want to get in the ring. There's a lot of business issues, uh, promoter issues, network issues, lots of stuff. Mm. So it's, you know, I'm not wasting my time thinking about it or talking about it unless guys ask me about it, but it's, you know, it's more fantasy than reality. A huge point uh, in this fight week has actually not been about Crawford Khan. It's been obviously about Big Baby Miller. What's it? Three different substances he's failed for now. Yes, four, four, four uh, tests that were well, three tests that were positive for four substances, but two of the substances were the same one. Right. Okay. So I mean, I'd go through the list. It was March 20th. He had a urine test that tested positive for, uh, I believe it's GW1516. Then he was tested again on March 31st. Uh, a blood test that one came back on Friday for e for uh, a human growth hormone, and then on the same day that they gave a sample of blood on the 31st, they also collected a urine sample. That result came back a few hours after the other one, and that one was also positive for the GW1516 as well as EPO. So Gerald Miller, you know, who said that he never knowingly took anything after the first positive test, was really a walking pharmacy, and made a video uh, on Friday night after. I reported on the second and third test failures that, uh, you know, he apologized basically and said, you know, he made a mess of things and, you know, he didn't actually say I'm sorry, but you could tell he's in, a, he's in a bad spot right now. Seems like people are just getting fed up of this drug situation in boxing. It's terrible. And it's not just boxing. It's pretty much All most sports. professional yeah, yeah. sports. I mean, uh, in boxing, I think if you use VADA, you know, they're the best testing agency out there. You know, they catch people. Uh, it, it blows my mind that Gerald Miller could get caught that many times knowing that he's providing blood and urine for legitimate testing. Uh, that to me is even more crazy because to, to, to voluntarily you know, go under their uh, jurisdiction to be tested and, and fail that many times, you just have no, no idea. Either you have no idea how to dope or you just are a dope. Um, who would you like to see Joshua fight on June the 1st? Well, I mean, it's not going to be Big Baby Miller, but, uh, you know, the, I mean, I'd love to see him fight Luis Ortiz. That's a name that, that Eddie Hearn brought up, but I don't necessarily think that that's going to happen. Um, you, know, you know, you'd like to see him fight Wilder. Obviously, that's not going to happen <laughs> because Deontay's fighting May 18th yeah. against Dominic Can't Cruzeiro. fight Fury. He's tied up. Yeah, Chisora? so Fury, I mean, that'd be okay. I don't see that happening, but, uh, you know, and that seems like more of a UK fight anyway. Mm. You know, same thing with the Dillian White. I mean, I know that, you know, according to Hearn, they offered the fight to Dillian White. Uh, yeah, he they, said he wouldn't take it. Frank I don't know. Smith said he's ruled it out, Dillian yeah, White. So. Exactly. So that would have been fine. But again, that's the kind of fight that would be huge in the UK. Um, so I think you're looking at possibilities, you know, maybe Kubrat Pulov, who's his IBF mandatory. Suspended, though? It's not, a, it's not a suspension for a very... I'm not going to I'm not going to underplay what he did. Mm. It was not right, mm. but it's not a medical suspension. It's a behavioral suspension, and those things are not necessarily uh, there's not necessarily reciprocity between the commissions. If it was a medical suspension, if he had like some kind of terrible, you know, injury or something then like they're that, really strict on then it. Then they're much more strict. Yeah. But when it's the, a behavioral thing like he did and it's not a failed drug test or anything, I think there's more discretion for commissions to license him. So, again, I'm not I'm not 
I'm not a big fan of what uh, what he did to the to the female reporter, but I suspect that if he was actually um, asked to do the fight and there was a deal to be made, that they could probably figure something out. Um, so I, but so anyway, I think Pulev might be a possibility. Obviously, Michael Hunter is a heavyweight that Eddie just signed, who not only did he just signed, but is training for a fight that's supposed to be May 25th in the United States uh, on the East Coast. So they could just back him up one week and you know send him to the New York area instead of to the DC area, and uh, that could be a possibility. Um, you know, I, we'll find out in a couple of Kel days. Konaki, I know he's ruled it out. Konaki, definitely not. I've okay. talked to Konaki's manager multiple times. 100% not happening. Right. They have another plan. Uh, they felt like, uh, you know, six and a half weeks was not enough time to get ready for the fight. If you've ever seen Adam Konaki, it's not a surprise. Um, but uh, that would be a good fight, but it's just not happening at this point. So from what you're saying, it seems like Hunter's probably the favorite at the moment. I mean, I'd be guessing. I mean, I would say it's Hunter. Maybe it's Pulev. I know I've seen uh, Frank Smith around here talking to the top-ranked people. Uh -huh. Obviously, they're the promoters or the co-promoters for Pulev, so not out of the realm of possibility. We'll see. Okay. Just the last one, Dan. Uh, how do you see sort of the US media and the UK media? How do you compare them up? Like the, 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 the video side of stuff? I mean, I don't know if there's really much difference. I mean, except that okay. we speak with different accents, I guess. I mean, no, I mean, the, the guys that, that, that do it here you know, do the same thing that you guys do. They try to, you know, get interviews with boxing people, myself, promoters, mm -hmm. managers, fighters, uh, you know, all through the industry. And, uh, and I think generally do a pretty good job doing it. Okay. So you don't see any major differences? I mean, unless I'm forgetting about something, I don't, I'm not really sure what, what there is. No, like agendas-wise, or do you not see? Listen, I can't. I, I would never make a blanket statement that say all of the guys that do interviews and post videos about boxing on their YouTube channels and, and on other platforms, that they all have an agenda because they're British or they all have mm. an agenda because they're American. I mean, certainly, there's definitely some guys in the States and Britain that do have agendas, but I don't think that's got anything to do with their nationality, where they're from. Um, same with a reporter. I mean, if, if I'm covering boxing as a journalist writing about boxing in the United States and, you know, and a, and a guy is doing a similar job in the UK, you know, some guys over there have agendas, some guys over here have agendas, some guy about certain fighters or other fighters. No, we all just do our job. Okay. Dan Ruffer, appreciate a bit of your time. Enjoy the fight tonight. My pleasure. Hope we get and, a good uh, one. When you come to the UK next? That's a very good question. I haven't been in a while, not since the Klitschko-Joshua fight. Hopefully we'll get another fight uh, later this year. I'd love to come back and, uh, and do it. I was thinking to myself, if... Uh, if uh, Zerto Ramirez went over to the UK Callum and fought Smith. Callum Smith, I, Brilliant would, fight. I, would, I would be interested to come and travel. I mean, I don't make that decision. That, you know, we leave that up to the bosses to decide where they're spending the money to send me to places. But uh, I would be interested in that. I'd be interested if, uh, if, if Khan and Brooke ever fought each other. That's a fight that Don't I get your hopes up for that one. Yeah, I still wouldn't mind coming over to see that. Uh, obviously, if Joshua was in, a, in a, another Klitschko-level fight, mm -hmm. would be would be uh, happy to come back to, to cover that fight in the UK. I've, I've enjoyed my trips to the UK. I haven't been there that many times three times for boxing events and I uh, had a blast all three times. All right. Nice one, Dan. Thank you. All right. You got it. My pleasure.